Disappointed. Now trotting out with purpose. Chris Burton from Australia. A part of the four combination team of Sam Griffiths along with Stuart Tinney and Shane Rose. Chris is 34 years of age. Born and raised in Queensland. Second Olympic Games here and currently rated second in the eventing world rankings rides the nine-year-old here Santano and as we've discussed there's been plenty of country hopping going on in the eventing ranks we see that uh, a lot and Chris lives in Surrey in the United Kingdom competed well at the Burley trials last year it was a good performance he had two horses in the top five and also holds the world record for the lowest ever score aboard uh, Santano. That was uh, in Campshire in 2015. Yeah, Chris Burton and Santano. This is the horse's first four star, as uh, we were just saying. The horse was at two star last year at Campfire in Ireland, got that astounding 24.5 dressage which is a recent record. This is the horse that won Samuel this year. And Christopher has a, a great uh, record there. He's uh, won it back in 2012 as well, that event. He's twice been the winner of the uh, Australia's International Three-Day Event in Adelaide as well. So nine years of age and quite sprightly this horse Santana yeah, one of the youngest in the field at nine Christopher is an immaculate dressage rider this is he's presenting this horse in a way that we'll see horses being presented in Grand Prix pure dressage later on in the games you know I said in this second group we've got you know, some individual medal hopefuls. Let me put that in perspective. The judge at M gave him 9.5 for movement two and nine for movement five of this test. There are first nines and 9.5s of the games. It's taken 21 riders to get there. And now the New Zealand judge gets in on the act with the half pass left in trot getting a nine from Andrew Benny. Yeah, this is going to make it hot work for the likes of Clark Montgomery and William Fox Pitt. Mikkel Jung, who is beatable in the dressage on Sam. Sam's not his first choice horse for these games. It just happens to be the horse that's won Burley and Badminton in the last six months. But Christopher's second win at Adelaide was uh, a, a real fairy tale. He was actually down home to teach a clinic uh, and go to the biggest horse trials in Australia. And uh, the normal rider of uh, T.S. Jamemo, the name might come back to me, um, suffered an injury at a horse trials off another horse the weekend before. And Christopher was offered the ride by the owners. And... Uh, went on to win the horse trials, having only sat up on the horse on the Tuesday. Yes, the Adelaide four-star, the only cross-country competition in the world that runs through the city, the massive park region of Adelaide in South Australia. A special event indeed, and gets some great crowds. The, the public really support that event. Upwards of 20 to 30,000 people on the cross country day. Again, you know, he's very rarely dipping below 7.5. I can see one or two sevens on his scorecard. And yet again, though, the judges aren't going crazy about this horse either. In the way they've been judging, what he's doing is worth 8.5s and 8s and the odd 9 and 9.5 that we're seeing. Will Enzinger. 
My apologies, Will, for not remembering it quicker. Will, a part of the Australian eventing scene for a long, long time. He's been riding at the top level for over a decade now. And yeah, the one thing about when a horse, you know, moves like this does is how much the riders pay tribute to the people who produce the horse in the first place. And, uh, you know, I know with Jamemo, Chris uh, thinks very highly of what Will had done with the horse originally as well. But this horse has been produced right the way up to Olympic level by this man, Christopher Burton. And that is a test, no doubt about it, is going to go into the lead. But will it be there after two days? He's getting a rousing applause from his teammate in Shane Rose and he'd have to be happy with that with the first signs of a nine and a nine and a half from our judges yes indeed so interesting to see he even got eight free salute which is high for what we've seen today Could we have a new leader? Oh, I think it's beyond doubt at that stage, looking at the scores that have been coming in. The question is, how big will the lead be? Remember, Sandra, Alfarth's lead was just 0.2 of a penalty over Astia. And what it also means is that uh, whilst the French have two in the top five, if, the, if he does go into the lead, which I think he will, they'll be third and fourth, Australia will have first and fifth. 